everybody. <laughs> I'm a little uh, laryngitis -y tonight, so bear with, but it kind of sounds hot, doesn't it? Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Thank you. Thank you so much. My Brenda Vaccaro moment. Oh, good. We're old enough in here to know who Brenda is. Good. Uh, so, do we have anybody here from the East Coast? We got East Coast? Yeah. Well, I am genetically East Coast in that my entire New York Jewish tribe is strewn across Long Island, Brooklyn, Scarsdale. But my parents decided to move to Kentucky <laughs> before I was born. So this is the Kentucky Fried version <laughs> of my New York Jewish tribe. So obviously, right after college, I went directly to my Jewish homeland, Manhattan. <laughs> and my cousin Heidi calls a few days later, and she's like the can-do, you're-in-good-hands kind of gal. You know, a good first call to get from a relative. She calls me, she says, listen, Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer. She likes to say things three times. Great New York. She said, listen, darling, I'm going to fix you up on your first date, New York. You met my boss the last time you were here. He likes you very much. He lives in a very nice doorman building around the corner from you. Go over to his lobby Friday night, 8 o'clock, meet him. Call me, call me, call me. Tell me how it goes. <laughs> so, and we all do what Heidi says. So I go to the lobby Friday night. There he is. And when he sees me, he pops right up and goes, oh, hey, you look great. How do you like New York so far? What do you want to do? You want to eat? You want to get coffee? You want to have a drink? You want to take the subway? You want to take a cab? You want to... Uh, thought he was nervous. No, I don't know. Uh, cab to dinner. Cab to dinner. Great idea. We're going to hop right in the cab. He's talking all the way in the cab, into the restaurant, still talking, and a little too loudly in a nice restaurant. Don't you hate that? We sit down. We order dinner. We order champagne. We drink it. And while waiting for dinner, after the champagne, he suddenly starts slowing down and down and the last thing he says is you look beautiful and passes out cold face down right there i was like oh my god my cousin's gonna kill you all i could think of is his demise with my cousin heidi and my first day in new york just passed out so i was still you know telling the story right so i'm thinking about this and the maitre d walks up and goes uh got a problem here <laughs> said i think we do so we kind of get money out of the wallet for the champagne. We wake him up a little bit. He helps me carry him to a cab. I throw him at his doorman, go home, open up a can of soup, wake up the next day and wait for the phone to ring. It's going to be him or it's going to be my cousin, right? <laughs> phone rings. It's Heidi. And she bounds right in with, oh my god, Jennifer, if I had ever, 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 I would have never, never, never. <laughs> Horrified. She tells me he took a lewd that backed up on him, so to apologize, he gets Heidi and me tickets to Evita, my first Broadway show. Good turnaround, right? <laughs> Interestingly enough, Broadway show number two comes with date number two. And this guy I like. Cute. Ivy League. Wall Street. A little older. New kind of society for me. It's our third date, romantic dinner. Kind of think we're going home together that night. I'm nervous, you know, and he sees that and he takes my hand from across the table and says, you know what the problem with Manhattan is, Jennifer? I thought he was going to say there's no bed, soft and warm, it's mine. You know, I don't know. <laughs> so I say, no, Don, what's the problem with Manhattan? He says, too many fucking Jews. <laughs> so I, I take my hand back. My vagina just snaps shut <laughs> in the chair. My arms are folded. I'm leaned back and staring at him in a coma. He says, well, what's wrong? Is one of your good friends Jewish or something? I said, uh, yeah, and maybe one of your good friends is too. He says, I don't think so. So now I've got Shalom Moron in neon flashing on and off on my forehead. I'm trying to beam this to him, right? He finally goes, well, you're not. I said, oh. Or are you all Jewish? I'm like, you know what, shh, shh, no more talking for you. You're already in quicksand. Now you're swimming. Around. Take my napkin off my lap, put it on the table, go home, open up a can of soup. <laughs> a pattern I don't like starting. And he calls and he says, so that was pretty bad, huh? I'm like, yeah, pretty bad. He says, I'd like to make it up to you. I'm like, I'm curious, how are you gonna do that? He said, it'll be a surprise, Saturday night, pick you up in a limo. Limo. Nice touch for a Nazi, I think. <laughs> the surprise part, though. Hmm. Well, as long as we're not going to a train station, you know. Surprise! <laughs>
I'm curious enough to get in the limo, get in the car on Saturday night. We're not staying very much, but I realized we're on our way to Broadway. Here comes Broadway show number two. Any guesses on what he's taking me to see? Fiddler on her. <laughs> it's about Jews, right? I'm like, you know, it's like if I had insulted a black woman and said, come on, let's go see Color Purple. I, I I said, you know, what's the thinking on this? And I said, you know, are you coming with me? You're dropping me off? Like, what happens here? And he goes in and he learns a little bit and I don't see him again, but I thought that was a pretty good turnaround too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Show number two? Yeah. Now, one more moment to share my first year in Manhattan that it definitely was not a date but it was a moment. And it starts with a gorgeous summer night in Manhattan. And you know, a beautiful night in Manhattan, the lights are sparkling, you're in the center of the galaxy, right? You're walking on air, I had a couple of cocktails. And I get to my apartment building, not my actual apartment, but, but the building, and a man comes up behind me and says, I've got a gun, keep going. Oh. Well, I'm in a good mood, right? <laughs> so I, I, I quip back, come on in, I'm going this way anyway. You know, I don't know what to do. <laughs> He follows me in, I turn around, I slam my purse into his chest and say, have a lovely evening. I did. And you know, men don't like holding on to women's purses, you forget that. And he's standing there awkwardly with it. And he said, you know what? I said, what? He goes, I don't want your purse. I said, why? It doesn't match your shoes? He said, no, I just want your money and your jewelry. Well, now I know he's high, right? Money, jewelry, drugs. And he hands me my purse back, poor thing. <laughs> so I give him 50 bucks a ring and a necklace I could care less about, and he's still standing there. And I know he's high, so I'm like, you know, you need directions? How are we doing? <laughs> he said, how about a blowjob? Oh. I said, that'll cost you 50 bucks for a ring and a necklace. <laughs> He leaves. I just couldn't get any action my first year in Manhattan. <laughs> 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 <laughs>